was a uh, fucking shite but uh, I should have a better clearer picture now I hope everybody's keeping well I haven't been doing much vlogging lately because I've been doing other things I've been busy and so on and uh, so <laughs> I made the video I'm making again well the, the Queen of England died last night <laughs> right after I arrived in England uh, and uh, yeah, it was like when she was dying yesterday, there was these mad thunderstorms all over the place. Unbelievable, like intense thunderstorms. And uh, so that was kind of weird, but there is a kind of a lot. I mean, even if you don't like royalty and if you don't care for it, I'm not royalist or anything like that, but there is a lot of magic and sort of sorcery connected to it, isn't there? You know? And so Queen Elizabeth had the second had been queen since well before I was born. So she'd been on the throne for a very, very, very long time. And, uh, you know, what, you know, it's, it's just a surreal thing that to think that she's not going to be queen anymore. Now, a, a gauging, now I'm in the north of England, which is, you know, culturally quite different than the south of England. And just being around today, I haven't even looked at any of the newspaper headlines. I haven't been at the shops, but... But the only thing you'd know that the Queen was dead was that the, you see that the Union flags are all at half-mast. Apart from that, you don't see nothing else. Uh, they haven't, there's no one walking around with glum looks on their faces. There's no public outpouring of grief. And that's because a lot of people in, in England and, you know, in England especially, are, you know, they're, they're not royalists. They, you know, you'd be surprised if any people in England want uh, a republic and they want to abolish the royal family so but it'll never end but there's lots of things here we have to consider from all kinds of like it, it is an important thing you know even if you don't think royalty is bullshit it's still it's still an important there's, there's you know it, it's a good psychic weathery kind of thing you know so the fact that nobody seems to be caring so much now, I don't know how it is in the south of England. It may be very different around the home counties and places like Hampshire and, you know, those Cheltenham and the Cotswolds and the posh parts of London, Belgravia, you know, and Holland Park. But around here, even like in the middle classy areas, I haven't where you thought where like, I was in a place just now, St. Anne's, and there's like mostly old, old folks living around there. And I didn't see any, I didn't detect any, outpouring of grief I what I noticed was the Union flags at half mast that's basically it so and I think a lot of that might have to do not so much that they're not mourning her but there I think there's a, be be very aware be very wary of Prince Charles you know this before I get to that I mean let's talk about this woman you know she like I said, had a, a tremendously long run sitting on the throne, unbelievably long. And uh, she, to her credit, to the woman's credit, she generally kept out of politics. And even in places where there was a political imperative, particularly Ireland's relationship with Britain and the history there, she skirted that issue very well, you know, and she didn't pander to either side. You know, the only thing, you know, it did make a big deal of every St. Patrick's Day, she'd present Shamrock to the, the Irish Guards, the soldiers. And that would be it, you know, and she'd wear green and this crap, you know. And uh, Members of the royal family now regularly sell, send out a St. Patrick's Day message to Irish people around the world, which is kind of weird. But I mean, what's it's Prince Charles' son? What's his name? William, Prince William, he, uh, and his wife Kate. They do a St. Patrick's Day message every year. It's just, just I mean, it's harmless. But you know, she scared that stuff very well. She scared that that stuff very very well, actually, and. Uh, and when when they had the first state the, the the first royal visit to Ireland since independence only took place about ten years ago, and uh, I have to say the whole thing was handled very well. 
and she even made an apology on behalf of the the atrocities that had that 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 happened you know in, in Ireland over the centuries and she didn't have to do that and she could have easily turned around and said the IRA were just were bastards too but I mean she she's actually said that the speech was quite nice but like it's a shame that uh, two countries right next to each other have these differences and it's a shame that religion and everything has to be brought into it but you know that's another thing too she to Anglican people to Anglicans that's like the Church of England Protestants Church of Ireland Protestants she's God's representative on earth when Henry VIII dissolved the monasteries and separated the English church from Rome he made himself God's representative on earth and ever since Henry VIII all British monarchs have been ostensibly God's representative on earth for Anglicans and Church of Ireland, Church of Scotland, and I think maybe Episcopalians in America too. And so there's a weird, that's you got that element of it, which is surreal in itself. You've got this element too that, you know, like if you go back and watch her original coronation, the films of it, it's film, it was one of the first things, news events that was covered in full colour, but not film, TV, I mean camera footage, it was, you know, pate film and it, it looks incredible it, the colors and the regalia and all the, the soldiers and all, all the, the uniforms and all the different the pomp and circumstance and all that stuff you know it's all it's like an an El, elgar opera come to life you know that's kind of way and uh yeah you can see all the ritualism the way she's cor she was coronated on the royal throne in Westminster Abbey and she sits atop this stone of scone and that stone was supposed to have been brought to Ireland originally by the, the two of the Danon uh, this is the story it goes in Tara for a long time it made its way to Scotland and then it made its way from Scotland down into this is one of the stories about it going down into England and that's why she sits on it uh, and so uh, it, the stone is considered magical so she sits on it and, the, and he, so Charles will be sitting on it when he's coronated by the Archbishop of Canterbury and uh, the crowns and everything and the scepters and all those things they're all like magical devices you know they're all magical devices you know I fit the, 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 the circular thing the scepter with the the cross on top of it that's like represents a supernatural power over the people you know so it's full of that stuff you know and remember she's a direct descendant of um, Queen Elizabeth the first who was the uh, you know the, as Alan Moore said they didn't call it a fairy queen for nothing she was the one tied up with John Dee and um, Edward Kelly and and now she's gone you know and now like I can remember as a little kid visiting my relatives in Liverpool and it was during the, the, the Silver Jubilee and that was the one with the Sex Pistols I was only a kid myself, I was like 10 or something, 9 and that was when the Silver, the Sex Pistols that came out of that, that year, at that time you know, God Save the Queen and everything and it was a very hot summer and I can remember all the, the Union Jacks everywhere and uh, even my cousins who are Irish, and they were all wearing like Silver Jubilee t-shirts, pictures of the Queen on it, you know, it was very, very, for an Irish kid it was very surreal. But also kind of fun too, because it was like, you know, something you'd never see in Ireland. And uh, not, in Ar not in the south of Ireland, in northern Ireland you would. But, um, so she's gone now, right? So she's gone. And... Should we be worried with Charles? Yes, very much so. You know me, I'm a great believer in looking for symbols and signs. Charles is starting to emerge as quite a sinister individual. Now, first of all, let's before I get to Charles, let's talk about how this thing will be used as a kind of a black magic. They're going to use her funeral as literally a black magic spell on the population. So it'll be used to redeem the fallen members of the royal family, Prince Andrew for in particular, you know. So people will be made to, when I say people, I mean 
the great unwashed will now be by means of the media fleet street will be cultivated into forgetting the whole the whole um, Epstein Island thing with Andy and you will see him in Westminster Abbey with tears rolling down and the cameras all focused on sobbing and you'll have his picture on the cover of the papers with things like you know you know a, a, a son's love for his mother or you know Andrew's grief and this kind of thing you know the tears of a prince and that's where everyone goes, oh, his, his mother is dead. His, the poor guy's mother is dead. And that's, you know, poor Andy, his mother's dead. And Fergie will probably be paid to be there, his, his ex-wife, to be there beside him to say, oh, look, she's come back for it to help, to help him in his, in his moment of pain. You know, that kind of thing, you know. So that, that will, that'll be, it'll be used to redeem him. It might also be reduced, redeemed, used to redeem, you know, uh, Prince Harry, the ginger one and his american wife i don't know i don't know that woman's name i don't i, I can't remember her name but the, the the american board that he's with right and you know that they they had terrible press even worse than andy in some ways you know they just cut they just you know this whole thing that they left the royals is a lot of bollocks anyway and that she's a bad influence and that she's damaged him and he's pussy whipped and all this stuff well that'll all be redeemed as well so we'll have the newspaper saying things like uh, Harry's Harry and Harry's wife was a rock who was there for the prince, you know, sobbing over the debt of his grandmother. A lot of that kind of thing. So expect expect when the funeral the happens that the media to lay the schmaltz on thick and hard and fast to particularly redeem the royals. To redeem them. That this is how they get away with it. And of course, following the, the... Now, what I find amazing is all you Americans who are all in convulsions over it. I have to... Why, why, you know... I don't understand this. Why are all you Americans royalists? Like, I so many Americans on my social media are posting pictures of her Queen Elizabeth II with, like, broken heart symbols next to it. Well, what is that about? You don't get that here. In England. I'm in England right now. I can tell you for a fact I'm in England right now. And, and and no one's upset about it that I've seen, and yet you can be sure that like in Wisconsin or California or God knows where, there's people sobbing their eyes out over it. What's that about? That's extremely weird, especially as your country won its independence by fighting George the Third and the and the monarch in the British Empire. You know the Irish media is laying it on thick as well, but that's only because they're globalist scumbags. But the average Irish person would be like, oh, well, you know, you will get Irish people who say, oh, well, she wasn't so bad after all. And you know something? She wasn't so bad after all. The, you know, at the end of the day, when you look at those, that what's in that family, she was, she was not the worst by a mile. Remember her sister? The one that was a slag, was, was it Princess Anne? That's her daughter. She had a, they had a sister who was like spreading her legs for everybody. And, uh, Mick Jagger was nobbing her and everything. And uh, and what's her name? Was it was a yo-yo knickered clothes horse? Uh, Diana. Diana was... Uh, she played this whole thing. You know, I, I remember when I was in America, the American media used to call Diana a commoner. And I had to laugh. I said, she's from the Dukes of Marlborough, Churchill. She, Marlborough Palace, the largest stately home in the world. She grew up in the biggest, the most, biggest, most opulent castle on the planet. Uh, from a family that go right back to the Dukes of Marlborough, they're they're such they're such high aristocrats that for somebody in the the, the Dukes of Marlborough to to become king or queen would probably be a step down. And here the Americans are calling her a commoner. I mean, that's how you have to laugh, you know. And they're all crying in convulsions over that. Uh, I was having Americans come up to me. I was living in America at the time that Diana died, and they would say things like, "I bet you're glad she's dead." And I say, "Why? You're Irish, you know. This the very the, the very simplistic childlike stereotypes." But they'll be all they'll be all, all the Americans on my social media all gushing their eyeballs out over the Queen. Fucking hilarious, and uh, 
So anyway, but you know, of all things considered, she wasn't the worst old bitch. She really wasn't, and uh, you know, yeah, was well, she? You know, she was all that bollocks of being born into absolute privilege and all that stuff. That's yeah, it's all true, and all that stuff. But you know, having said that, I think in years to come, people will look back and say, when they see what's coming next. They'd be going, I wish I had Queen Lisbeth who didn't get involved in politics. Which brings us to Mr. Tampon. You know you know he's called Mr. Tampon because he was ca caught when he was married to Mr. Biggers with Tampon. He was caught uh, someone type taped his tap when he was married to Diana, some newspaper tapped his telephone. And he his his sexual fantasy was to be one of Carmilla's tampons. He said, I, 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 want, I wish I was your tampon. I could just go crawl up in there and, and live there. So he's, it's embarrassing. That's, that, that, that's private life stuff. That should never be in the media. I do feel sorry for him for that. But that's why they called him Mr. Tampon. Now, he obviously didn't have a good relationship with his mother. Therefore, he married his mother. <laughs> it, it, it's funny. There's lots of Oedipus complex in the psychic weather these days. Of late... I'm seeing a lot of Oedipus complexes everywhere, but yeah, I mean that was it. That was an Oedipus complex. He he didn't he didn't get on with his mother, so he married her, Carmilla. And you know, so he married kind of married his mother in in her form, in an agreeable form. Now, and you know, this guy. Well, let's talk about Charles, right? This guy is. He did a video. I saw a video he did about ten years ago, and he goes. We, we have to get used to living with less stuff. Less stuff, because he's an environmentalist. So you have to get used to living with less stuff, right? And then they showed, like, the stuff that this, this fucker owns, right? And it was, like, on top of, like, the five or six palaces and stately homes he has, you know, including, like, fabulous townhouses in London and stuff like that, he, um, he has something like a 100 motorcycles. He's, uh, his hobby is, is motorcycles. And so he has like a hundred top of the range or collectible motorcycles. So he's loads of Harleys and, 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 and classic British motorcycles like Nortons and BSAs and all that kind of stuff. And he, 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 he rides the motorcycles around his, his, his stately home properties, uh, racing with his posh friends. And he also has a shitload of sports cars, like and really nice old cars, like really flash Bentleys and MGs and American, really beautiful american cadillacs and stuff like this you know like old like beautiful old cadillacs and stuff that you know be expensive to bring over to england and he has them on his stately properties and uh, then he has all his yachts and his all the other gym palaces and all that other stuff he owns a huge chunk of scotland right a huge he owns he actually owns a huge chunk of scotland and he owns all of cornwall now, if you don't know, Cornwall is a very big county in the southwest of England, and it's the only official Celtic nation in in on the in England. You know, the Scotland and Wales, but the in England, the only official Celtic nation is Cornwall, and he owns all of that. I mean, the Celtic Celtic England extends into Devon and parts of Somerset, but he he owns all of like official Celtic England. So if you want to, if you, like, it's so nuts that if you're collecting seaweed off the beach to put in your garden or use it to make food, you have to have a letter of permission from Prince Charles. If you go to pick, uh, at the side of the, the road, there could be slowberries or mushrooms or uh, anything, you know, anything. And uh, chestnuts, hazelnuts walnuts growing in the wild just the trees along the side of the hedgerows if that's not on anyone's property it's hit it's prince charles property so if you see a, a you know if you see a slow slowberries or blackberries or something like that growing wild and you and you want to pick them you have to have a letter from if you live in cornwall you have to have a letter of permission from prince charles even if you collect uh sh shells from the beach you know like kids beach combing kids collecting beach shells is polishing them up you have to have a letter of permission from him so that's that's the guy who wants us to have less stuff 
Now, let me have a swig of this before I get to that. The really interesting stuff. This is why you watch my videos. Because I'm good at stitching stuff together. Prince Charles. They've been going, hey, he's drinking Dr. Pepper and soda. Yeah, the only soda I drink is Dr. Pepper because I really, really like Dr. Pepper. Leave me alone. Let me enjoy my life. It's not a crack pipe. It's a bottle of Dr. Pepper. I'll have once every couple of weeks. So don't hassle me on that. I love, I love that that with Dr. Pepper flavor. So anyway, he, Prince Charles, is like that with Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum. Like that, right? And he's down with the whole thing of like, you will own nothing. Well, you and I will own nothing and we'll be happy. Well, we won't be, they'll be happy. You think he's going to give up all his palaces and his collection of motorcycles and his collection of sports cars? He's going to give Cornwall back to the people? No. What ha What's happening? How he runs the Duchy of Cornwall is how the World Economic Forum wants to run the whole world. That you wouldn't be able to do anything without a letter of permission. And that letter of permission would be the microchip plugged into your arm. Now this is where you, I'm serious on this. I know I'm I know I'm a bit of a, a jack the lad and I'm joking and I have a joke. I'm always a bit of a lad. But I'm dead serious on this one, you know that. The World Economic Forum thing. What the you will own nothing and be happy means that it's a land grab like it was in the Middle Ages. You see, ever since ever since things like the Magna Carta and the peasants revolt in England, and then all the other things that happened in the centuries in between, the American Revolution, the French Revolution, that was a very big one, Russian Revolution, uh, the, the amalgamation of the German Empire, Garibaldi's uh, amalgamation of the Italian state, and so on, so on, so on. That has always been about the poor people getting a, a, a bite of the cherry, okay? And that's what that's the, the, the trajectory. And these aristocrats and wealthy have always resented that. They have always wanted to go back to the time of the serfdoms of the of the Middle Ages, where basically a, a human being, unless they were members of the, the lordly class, were animals. You were livestock. You were an animal, right? Now they've always wanted to go back to that because they they literally sit in their castles, going terrified, or going to take we're going to take another penny from them, you know. And that what you see when you have this thing where you, you can't pick slowberries and or, or hazelnuts from the road in Cornwall, that's literally how they think. They, they, we give them too much, they'll take everything. And that's so that the World Economic Forum, its great reset is the method by which they can get back to serfdom. And why can they do it? Because now they have the technology to do it, right? They have the medical and the biometric and the digital technology 5g and so on to be able to do that now if you read about the social history of the middle ages and before and like much later times like i'm talking about like way up into like you know the enlightenment before that i'm i'm, I'm reading about the pen the witches what you're struck by by, by the fact is that the, that money did not did not exist for the poorest people you know it was almost impossible for them to get any kind of money so they lived off subsistence lifestyles, and it was hard. It was hard, a hard life, but money was just not there for them. And it was in the Middle Ages there was ostensibly for the poor a cashless society, and this is ensured they never even left their own towns. So that's why we have the story to pen their wishes when they were going to Lancaster that they saw Morecambe Bay and the Irish Sea, and it was the first time in their lives they'd seen the sea, because that you didn't travel outside your own area. Why? Because you had no money. And there was all toll roads and things like that. You know, they, so the travelling was for the rich and the lordly class. And the people who worked for them. And that's what they want again. They don't want you travelling. They want you locked down with very little cash or no cash. And Charles is all part of that. You know, we all grew up looking at English money. And the English, the English money. Like I'm, out, I'm over here in England. Like so that the English money. What do you associate the English money with? You know, there she is, Queen of the 
the, the, the sovereign. You always associate the, the English money with the, the queen, and she's, she's, she's on the, uh, see, she's on the. Canadian and the Australian one, I think, too. You know? And, uh, well, she, the symbolism may be with her debt, with her debt, right? With her debt. You will own nothing and be happy. It will be very interesting to see if they mint coins with Charlie Big Ears on them. You know? Is he the monarch for the cashless society? Will it be kind of a digital, will it be like kind of like a, you know, a kind of a, instead of, you know, a digital device maybe that started off in a card or something, you know, like it'd be a digital device and a card, and you'd have like so much, uh, and a, probably a, a 3D biometric print of uh, Prince Charles or something, and then you hold it up like this, and you, you know, they got your eyeball, and then they go, oh, you can have 15, you can have 15 Schwab units, you know. Oh, but last week you were on social media, and you were, uh, you 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 said something about that the government isn't doing a good job with the distribution of the cricket milk, and you didn't get a, you didn't get a correct quota of cricket cricket milk this week. Well, who the fuck do you think you are, peasant? So your your fifteen Schwab units has been re reduced to eleven Schwab units. You know this is this is what they're they're playing for, it's digital serfdom. You know the the with the when the land was partitioned by the Normans. That gave that gave them a kind of a digitalized. That was the beginning of the digitalization of the landscape, you know. Like when you go to Ireland and you see all the stone walls and the hedgerow fields, and you see that in France and you see that in England, well, that was the first kind of digital, digital mapping, you know, divide the countryside into specific units, and give the serfs control as tenants over certain points. But ultimately, it's not really theirs. They have their their small holding that they can grow their their few vegetables and stuff in the yard and keep a few chickens but this time we won't even have that we won't even have that this time we will own absolutely we won't even have to grow the veggies or anything and charles prince charles king charles as he is now will be in a couple of days is the back daddy of all that stuff now here's where it gets interesting and here's where you dr pepper or no dr pepper why you love me and why you choose it now even if you don't love me and think think i'm a, an irish twat why are you still tune into my videos why do you hear this one there was a monarch in england sorry there was a royal in england before world war ii called edward edward was heir to the throne of you know great britain and northern ireland united kingdom he had a relationship with a woman called Mrs. Simpson. It was an older American woman. She was still an aristocrat, though. And he abdicated the throne. The official story is because he wanted to marry her and she wasn't of royal stock. That's the official story, right? That's not the real story. The real story was that Edward and Mrs. Simpson were best friends with Adolf Hitler and were enamoured with the Nazis. They were totally down with the whole Third Reich thing. They wanted the genocides, the Liebenstrom, the living space. They were against the subhuman people. They were for the old Aryan Ubermensch thing. That the, All that stuff, they were friends with SS officers and Prussian aristocrats in the Wehrmacht and the Luftwaffe and they had a, a special friendship with Adolf Hitler and the future king of England adopted was not only married his mother in a kind of an Oedipus complex but also enamoured 
Adolf Hitler. So the King of England was basically owned by Adolf Hitler and the Third Reich. And a lot, and this is why Adolf Hitler is called his mother, the most da the Queen Mother called her the most dangerous woman in Europe. That was her. That was his. What is his mother? That was his aunt. Yeah, it was his brother who was married to. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was his, I can't remember. Whatever. She because she was an interfering old bat, but uh, Hitler saw the power of these people. And it was the Queen Mother who got Edward to to step down from the throne, and they created this whole fake story of the 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 King and Miss, Mrs Sim, Mr Simpson, like he gave up his his throne for the love of an older woman, and that was the that was the cover story, right? But it gets better. Prince Charles, if you look at the earliest pictures of the World Economic Forum. Who's there beside, but beside Prince Charles? Klaus Schwab, an older German man with a plan. An older German man with a plan that we will have nothing in our hands. You know, like whatever, you know? Break down. Rap and robot is here to stay. You know, like that kind of thing. That's literally all coming true. Anyway. So you have like, once again a bon a, an heir to the throne and he's the heir apparent now, official, with in an Oedipus complex with an older board, right? Enamoured with a German sort of good father. For Edward, for Ger it was Adolf Hitler, for big ears, it's Klaus Schwab. This is not good stuff. So basically, but it's also a useful piece of the information that we can actually say. They'll say, well, what's so bad about the, what's so bad about the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset? And you can say, well, it's the Fourth Reich. How do you mean it's the Fourth Reich? And then you can start saying, well, the Third Reich had very similar situations. Bridge, you know, Edward, sorry, Prince, not Prince George, Prince, King Edward. And Mrs. Woodward. This time Charles and Carmilla, that his Oedipus complex, and his father figure is a German megalomaniac, who wants to own the human race, and 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 a lot of the ideals of the World Economic Forum. To remove the banks. You see, you you idiot Nazis, you you, you idiots, you are you, you Hitler fanboys out there, and there's a. A few of you in the uh, in the old scene. Hitler wanted to take down the banks. No, he wanted to reform the banks in very similar ways to what Klaus Schwab is, i.e., give them more power, right? And so you wouldn't be borrowing cash; you'd be borrowing credits. Okay. This was the this the, Hitler came to power with the with with the with the blessing and the financing of the banks. I have to laugh at these people. Right to say he took on the bankers, he didn't he changed the relationship with the bankers? What is Klaus Schwab doing? Is Klaus Schwab shutting down these banks? If Klaus Schwab was shutting down these banks, they'd have them all executed, you know. It's one, but no, it, there's a plan for the banks to prosper in the Great Reset. We don't fully know what it is, but we will find out in time. Like tw 10 years ago, you had all these oil companies suddenly joining the carbon neutral thing, all big evil oil companies, Shell, Amoco, all of them, every last Exxon, every last one of them, all the big oil companies are all suddenly on board, BP, with, uh, the, 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 get, you know, getting away from carbon, and you're like, well, why are these bastards destroying their, their product? And then you realise, was, they weren't, they were creating a new business market, i.e. battery powered cars. There's no such thing as an electric car, it's a battery powered car. And what produces the power to charge these batteries? Petrol and gas. And that explains why all the oil companies were down with the whole carbon neutral thing. They were, it was not going to affect their business at all. Instead of delivering, instead of delivering petrol at the pumping station 
they were going to be delivering petrol to the power station that would deliver it to the battery charging point. So therefore, they were actually going to save money by closing down all their petrol stations. You know, they, they, and they were, so they were just to sell direct to the, the battery charging companies to their, their electricity. So that's why you have all the oil companies now investing in, in power stations. They just changed their business model and in the process they can lay off tens of thousands of people who work in their garages and, and all that other stuff. So that's why they've all, they're all, so, and, and the same thing is going to happen with the digital currency and the Klaus Schwab's dealings with the banks. They're just supporting this because there's a new kind of scam down the road for them. It's almost certainly social credit. The social credit thing is almost certainly what's down the road. It's about, you know, it's not only, you know, the days of f having laws and statutes and finding people, public fines, that's all over. You can just deduct their wages or deduct all their wages, shut off their, you know, their, their you know, their, their Schwab credits, whatever it's going to be called. And Prince Charles is front and center with this. So, it's only going to get really interesting. When he's coronated, you watch that his speech will have very little to do with Britain and England. Very little. His speech will be all about globalism. You know, when Prince, when Queen Elizabeth did her speech, she, it was all about Britain and the empire. Well, this one will be about the globalization, the great reset and a little bit. So right now in the World Economic Forum, they're going, the Queen is dead, boys, and we're going to get the Great Reset. You know, that's what they're singing. So I broke into, into Davos with a private jet and a helicopter. They said, well, Charles going to be king soon, and we're going to get that bitch and get rid of her. Yeah. So if the most sinister person and the most dangerous and the most powerful person on the earth right now is a guy with gigantic ears who wants to be a tampon love you all